This is going to be the first of our videos on factorising. Now we're just going to look at taking out a common factor in this video and there will be a further two videos to come dealing with a difference of two squares and also with trinomials. Now what is factorising? Well factorising is just the opposite of multiplying out brackets effectively so you should all know what to do when you're multiplying out brackets so if you end up with uh, a question asking you to multiply out 3 brackets x minus 2 you would go and you would do 3 times x is 3x 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 so this whole process as you go from left to right that is multiplying out brackets what we're talking about is coming in the opposite direction so you're coming from uh, something with no brackets whatsoever and you're being asked to put in the brackets and you do that uh, through a process called factorizing okay now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at examples where you factorize by taking out a common factor now that common factor has to be the highest common factor possible it might be numerical it might be a letter or it might be something a bit more complex so we'll start off by looking at numerical examples okay so if we just look at maybe three examples just now so we'll ask you to have a look at factorizing um, <clears throat> let's go for 9y plus 12 let's go for 15x minus 45 and let's go for 16x um, well we'll go for 16 plus 4x okay now what you've got to do as we look at a first of all what you've got to do is you've got to think what is the highest common factor what's the largest uh, factor that goes into 9y and 12 now looking at the numbers what goes into 9 and 12 think of anything any number which has stations in its times table which are 9 and 12 and the highest of these is our highest common factor now in this case that is 3 now you then say well 3 times what gives me 9y 3 3's give me 9 3 times 3y gives me 9y then secondly you say 3 times what gives me 12 3 times what gives me 12 3 times positive 4 and that's all there is to it. You've got your factor on the outside, your highest common factor, and you just use common sense to fill in the brackets. Okay, let's have a look at the second one. Now, remember I said what you've got to take out is the highest common factor. Now, what's the highest common factor of 15x and 45? Now, you might think it's 5, but the highest common factor is actually 15. If you were to only take out 5 as your common factor, you would not fully have a fully factorized expression. It would only be partially factorized and you wouldn't get the marks that you'd be looking for. So 15 times, let's use a different color. 15, 15 times what gives you 15x? That's just 15 times x. Now we then want to have a look at the negative 45. Now 15 times three will give me positive 45. So 15 times negative 3 gives me negative 45. And notice how here we had plus in our question, plus in our answer. Here, negative, negative. Okay, minus, minus. Looking at the last question, the last example, this time is a wee bit different because we've got the numerical term coming first and the letter term coming second. But your approach is the same. You just say, well, what's the highest common factor of 16 and 4x? And that is, of course, 4. You then open up your brackets and you say, well, 4 times what gives me 16? That's 4 times 4. You then say, 4 times what gives me 4x? And that's just positive x. And that's it. Now, you can check that all of your solutions are correct just by multiplying them out. And you should end up back where you started. So if we look at this one, 4, 4, 16. 4 times x, 4x. And that's it. Okay. Now, sometimes you'll be asked to factorize expressions where the highest common factor might be a, a letter term. Okay, so let's look at three examples. 
like that. Okay, let's say you're asked to factorize x squared plus 5x. Let's say you're doing um, 3y squared minus 7y. And let's say we're doing 6x plus uh, 13x squared. Okay, now as you look at each of these, if you look, well, there's no numerical common factor. Okay, the only number that goes into 1 and 5 is 1. So, what do we do? We then consider the letters. What goes into x squared and x? Well, the highest common factor there is x. So we'll open up a bracket and we'll say x times what gives me x squared? That's x times x. x times what gives me positive 5x? That's positive 5. And that's you done. Let's have a look at the second one. Now, there's nothing that goes into 3 and 7. There's no times table which has stations of 3 and 7 except the 1 times table. So we then, having ruled out any numerical common factor, we then consider the letters. Now what have we got? We've got y squared and y. y to the power of 2, y to the power of 1. So the highest common factor is just y. And you then say y times what? Well, if we deal with the numbers first of all, this is just 1y, remember? So 1 times what gives me 3? 1 times 3 would give me 3. Then look at the letters. y times what gives you y squared? y times y. Now looking over here, again, 1 times what gives you negative 7? Just be negative 7. And look at the letters. y times what gives you y? Just y times 1. So that there is all I need. I don't need any letter term over here because this term here has y to the power of 1, or just y. Okay. Now, if we look at um, the last example, okay, if we look at the last example, uh, we'll see that, again, we have no numerical common factor. So, what we have to do is look at the letters. Now, the highest common power of x is just x to the power of 1. So, all we take out is just x, and we can then say that x times 6 gives us 6x. And we can also say to get plus 13x squared, I'm going to need plus 13. And I'm also going to need not just plus 13, because these two would multiply to give me positive 13x. Because I want positive 13x squared, I need an x there as well. So be on the lookout for common factors which are numerical, as well as letter. Uh, common factors as well and sometimes you might end up with a common factor which is a bit more complex still it might involve a letter and a number okay and that letter might be uh, there might be more than one letter and they may be raised to different powers as well so we'll look at a few examples like that just now okay let's say you were asked to factorize these questions okay Let's say you had um, 16 AB plus 20 AC. And let's say we had um, 30 MN squared plus 10 MN. And let's say that we have 8x squared, y squared, and we're taking away 12x squared z, and then we'll do a fourth one, and we'll say that we have 4mpq squared, and we'll add 6m squared Okay, now let's do these. Now, the secret to getting all of these questions correct is to just take a step-by-step -step approach. So for the first one, we're going to take out our highest common factor. We know that in each of our solutions, we're going to have a highest common factor on the outside and then a bracket coming after it with two terms because each of our questions 
have two terms in there. You could come across examples which have more than two terms, but that's all we'll deal with here just now. So look at the numbers that are involved first of all. 16 and 20. What's the highest common factor of 16 and 20? That's just 4. Look at the letters now. Anything common? You can see that A is appearing in each one. So 4A is our highest common factor. We then start to fill in our bracket. To make 16AB, 4 times 4 gives you 16. Then look at the letters. AB, I'm going to need A times B. To make 20AC, what do I need? 4 times positive 5 gives me positive 20. A times what would give me AC? It would be A times C. So I've got 4B plus 5C appearing in my bracket. Let's look at the second question. Okay. Now, we have 30 and 10. So the highest common factor there, numerically, is just going to be 10. Now, what have we got common? We've got M and M. So we're going to have, I have to move this bracket a wee bit. So we're going to have an M outside the bracket. Now, what else do we have? We've got N squared here and just N to the power of 1 here. So the highest common uh, factor in terms of the letter n, the part of the common factor is just going to be n to the power of 1, or just n. Now let's see what we can do. 10 times 3 gives us 30. Now I need to go from mn to mn squared, so I need to raise the n up by 1 to give me n squared, so I need an extra n there. Now to make 10mn, 10mn times itself. Is times 1, sorry, is what's going to give me 10 n n. Okay, that's all we need to do for the second one. Now for the third one, let's have a look at the, le the numbers. 8 and 12, the highest common factor is 4. So now let's look at the letters. We have x squared common, so x squared comes out. Nothing else is common. We've got y squared here, z over here. So we need to now construct our um, terms by using common sense to fill in our brackets, okay? So, 8x squared, y squared. Well, look at the numbers. 4 times what gives you 8? 4 times 2 is what you're going to need. Look at the letter 10. You've got x squared, y squared. What do you need to multiply x squared by to get x squared, y squared? You need y squared. Look at the number here. You've got negative 12. 4 times negative 3 will give you negative 12 and you have 4x squared so if you've got x squared already you need x squared z so you need to add a z alongside the 3 okay now for this last one what have we got we've got 4 and 6 so the highest numerical part of that common factor is going to be 2 what else do we have common we've got m here uh, m squared there we've got p there and p there so we know there's going to be an m common. You've got an m here, and you've got an m to the power of 2 here. So m is the highest, uh, just m on its own is the highest uh, bit we can take out with respect to the m's. And for the p's, there's a p common as well. So we can use our common sense to fill in the bracket. Now, 2 times 2 will give us 4. Now, I've got mp already. I need mpq squared, so I need to add q squared alongside my 2. I also need to now finally make up 6m squared p. Now, look at the numbers. 2 times positive 3 is going to give me my 6. Now, if I've got mp already, and I need to raise this m up to a power 2 to give me m squared p, what I need to do is write 3m there. And that's factorizing by taking out a common factor. All you need to do is to get out the highest common factor. It might be a number on its own, it might be a letter, or it might be something a bit more complex like we've looked at here. Okay, there are three questions for you to do yourselves. You can see how you get on, and then we'll put the answers up in a wee minute. Okay, so let's see if you can do these. Let's look at 10 m s t squared minus 14 m squared s and let's do 5 x y 
plus 15 um, x y squared z and one more we'll do 7 p r squared q squared um, and we'll do plus twenty one P R M. Okay. So pause the video, see how you get on with these questions, and then you can have a look to see if your answers match up with what I've got here for you. Okay. So if we go through these three questions, the highest common factor here is going to be two M S. And then, if I fill in my bracket, I'm going to have 5t squared. And in here, I'm going to have minus 7, and I need minus 7m. Okay? Now, for the second one, my highest common factor is going to be 5xy. And if I fill in my bracket, I'm just going to have 5xy times 1 to give me 5xy. And the second term will be constructed by me including in this part 3. And I need to go from xy to xy squared z, so I need an extra y, and I need a z as well. And finally, for this last one, 7 comes out, p comes out, r comes out, and that's all. And then we can fill in our bracket. 7 pr, I need an extra r, and I need a q squared so that when these two multiply together, I end up with what I've got over here. Now, 7 times 3, positive 3, will give me positive 21. And I've got my PR already. I want PRM, so I need an extra M. And that's your solutions there. So we'll um, look at factorizing by, taking out, uh, by uh, finding a difference of two squares and dealing with that. And we'll also look at another video um, at how to factorize trinomials as well. So I hope that was helpful.